Game Industry Crunch. We've all heard about it. It's scary. Everyone's talking about how in the game industry, you have crazy working hours, don't get time. Your work-life balance is a mess. So today I'm going to be talking about Game Industry Crunch, what it is, why it happens, and what your approach should be if you are going to be joining the game industry or you are already in the game industry. So what I'm going to tell you is a result of my own experience of around 14 years of making games and also what I've observed from others and I've observed studios doing, right? I'm going to take an objective approach in which I am going to try and deconstruct the issue, the reasons for it, and for what the best attitude and approach should be for you when it comes to crunch in the video game industry. All right, so before we go forward, make sure that you have subscribed to this channel if you haven't done so already, and make sure that you hit the notification icon. Also, make sure you're on the Gamer to make a Discord server, and you follow me on Instagram. So let's go. Firstly, what exactly is crunch? Crunch is when game teams have to work extra. If you're working in a game studio, it means you usually work, say, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. and you get Saturday, Sunday off. During crunch times, that's not the way it is. You probably have to work late, stay late, go home late. You probably have to work Saturday, Sunday, and this may go on for a... In, you know, indefinite period of time, it means that your work life balance, your family life is going to be affected, you're going to not going to have spare time, you won't have enough sleep, you're going to be tired, you're going to be overworked. That essentially is what crunch means. All right, now let's talk about the reasons why crunch happens. The first most important reason for crunch to happen is bad planning. Now, as I like to call it in Game and Maker, there are four P's of game development. There is plan, there is produce, there is polish, and there is push. But right now, I'm going to talk about the first phase, which is plan. In this phase, in the planning phase, which is also known as pre-production, serious game teams ask and answer three very, very fundamental questions. Why? Why are we making this game? Secondly, they answer the question, what are we going to make? What is the game? What is the genre? What is the story? What are the mechanics, etc., etc.? And then they answer how. How are we going to make this game? The how is the project planning, how much time is going to take, right? So in pre-production, firstly, you're going to come up with a concept. You're going to scope the game. Scoping means can we actually build this game? You're going to be asking yourself that question. Are we able to make this game in the time and with the resources that we have? Um, and once you answer that question, once you've scoped your game, you're actually going to come up with a project plan, who the resources are, who's going to do what work, how long is it going to take, what working hours are going to be, how many days are going to take, etc. All this stuff is decided in pre-production. And apart from that, there's also prototyping and documentation, etc. But the planning is the most important part. Now, if a game team gets this wrong, if you scope the project wrong, if you try and make something that you don't really have the capability for, or you don't have a good project plan, then things get messed up. This is one of the biggest reasons why game projects kind of go to hell. It's because they don't have good project planning. So in game studios where there is not enough stress and you don't have enough competent people to actually plan out your project, scope your project and good, do good pre-pro, there is a very, very good chance that you may try and build something too big you know, that can't be done in the time you have and with the people you have, and you're going to end up in trouble at the end of the project, and then you're going to have to crunch to finish the project. That is number one reason for crunch. Making games, having a game team actually requires good and competent leadership, and believe me, that is not very common, common in not just the game industry, but in any industry. All right, reason number two for crunch is bad stakeholder management. Now, what do I mean by stakeholder? 
every game team, every game studio has stakeholders outside of the core team. So the core team consists of your designers, your artists, your programmers, and your testers, and you have people outside of this core team, which are essentially your stakeholders. They're kind of like your partners. Now, within the company, this could be could be the product team. So these are the guys that know the market. They kind of guide you as to what you need to make. And then there's a marketing team. So these are guys who are going to be selling the game. They're going to be marketing the game, putting the game out there. That's within the company. Outside of the company, you can have stakeholders such as you can have an IP owner. So a very common stakeholder for a game team is an IP owner. It's possible that you've tied up with, uh, with a company that holds an IP such as a superhero or a cartoon character or a, or a movie or a book to actually work and the, the game concept is actually based around that and uses characters from that. So they actually own the IPs and they have very, very strict control over your game you know, they're not going to just allow you to do whatever with their IP. They probably have very, very strict rules as to what the characters should look like and what the, the storyline should look like. So they are going to be your biggest stakeholders. Next stakeholder could be outsourcing companies. It's quite possible and it's very common these days that game companies actually outsource one part of the game making process it's possible you have a testing team in a different country that's actually going to test your game or you have someone doing the art for your game so these outsourcing companies that can will also be your external stakeholders next up platforms it's possible your game is going to release on steam or xbox or or nintendo or or playstation and these platforms have their own rules they have their own requirements and the game that you're going to be building has to actually match their requirements so they are very very important stakeholders so all these stakeholders have a say in your game and what normally happens is that you can't just build whatever you want if when someone's building a game you have to make sure that you manage all these stakeholders you have to make sure that they're happy uh, that their requirements are satisfied so it means that there has to be someone managing them there has to be someone showing them demos showing them the concept art and at every stage in the development of the game they need to be shown and you have to take their feedback and the game project has to be made not just according to what you want but also in accordance with what the stakeholders want right now a big problem which happens a lot is that these stakeholders are not managed properly there's no communication and the most common mistake is especially with someone like whom you have an ip you don't show them the game till it's well done when it's towards the end and then the ip holders look at what you've done and they say oh no no this is terrible we can't have this character looking like this there's something of this story we are not happy this is our ip please change it and then very close to the end of the project you have to redo everything this happens a lot more than you think and then if you have not managed your stakeholders well you're going to have to make massive changes towards the end of the game thousands and thousands of hours of work are going to be lost and the game is going to be delayed this is i would say definitely stakeholder management one of the big reasons why games get delayed and for this you require very very close coordination with them once again you require good leadership you require a good relationship with these stakeholders and it's very very common for game projects to get delayed and crunched because of poor stakeholder management so now i want to talk about the legal stuff so be aware that if you're working with someone else if you're working an external stakeholder you most likely have a contract right um now in this contract it always specifies that there has to be a launch date for the game now it's not just a random date what happens is that if you're going to be releasing a game you have to actually book marketing slots you perhaps have to book tv slots or advertising on the internet or some other space and these slots have to be paid for in advance and you can't get that money back so if the game gets delayed all that money gets lost which means that if you're working with an external stakeholder they will probably have a clause in the agreement which says that the game has to release at a particular time and if you don't release the game at a particular time you lose a lot of money sometimes the fines are bigger than what the entire game budget is so it's 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 a pretty terrifying thing for a game studio to actually think of paying these fines and which is why if the studio wants to survive very very often you know the employees and the people working have to crunch to prevent this huge financial loss from happening 
the third reason for crunch is often bad luck and timing now it's possible that you do everything right that you do your planning beautifully you manage your stakeholders really well and you still have problem you still get screwed over because something outside of your controls happens i give you an example i've been in a situation where a company had a number of games in lots of different markets and then the geographical market, which was Europe, changed regulations overnight and said, all right, within the next 60 days, uh, games are going to have this particular feature and they cannot have this particular feature, which meant that within 60 days, all the games of that studio would have been pulled down and the revenue would have come to zero. So within 60 days, everyone had to get together, work overtime, crunch like crazy to make sure that those changes were made to the games because otherwise, you know, they wouldn't have had a job. So it often happens that you need to crunch or games get delayed or bad things happen in which you have to work overtime because of no fault of yours. It's also a reason and it happens more often than you would think. There's another thing that you guys need to be aware of and this not a lot of people know and that is that crunch does not affect the entire game team the same what do i mean by that now essentially in a game team there are fundamentally four roles of developers there are the designers there are the artists there are the programmers and then there are the testers practically what happens is that usually crunch happens at the end of the project and that's when programmers and testers get affected the most because essentially the designers and artists works happens towards the beginning of the project um, the designers create all the documentation and then they man monitor the game uh, pretty much for its whole period and the artists most of their work is you know creating the assets and handing them over and then they actually have to be implemented uh, by the programmers and has to be tested by obviously the testers and towards the end of the game it's a lot of bug fixing, it's a lot of tuning, it's a lot of balancing, there are a lot of issues of optimization that have to be sorted out. And most of the time, it's the testers which are playing the game, checking regression, checking bugs, and it's the programmers who are fixing these. So in most cases that I've seen, in crunch, uh, programmers and testers get affected a lot more and not the the designers and the artists now it's not that they are not affected the artists and the designers it's just that it's not so bad for them so this is also something that you should probably keep in mind okay so now that we've talked about what crunch is why it happens and to whom it happens the next question is so what do we do about it what should your approach be if you want to join the game industry or you're already in the game industry and you're experiencing crunch now the first thing I'm going to say about this, and this is going to piss off a lot of people, is that if you want to be in the game industry commercially and not experience crunch at all, well, don't join the game industry. Do not make video games for a living. You can do them as a hobby. You can do them part time. You can have your income from something else and make games part time. Because if you do want to make games commercially at some point, I can guarantee you that you are going to have to be in a crunch situation. Now, this is not just for a game studio. Even if you're a solo developer making a game by yourself and you know, if you have a publisher whom you've signed a contract with and you're really happy, they're going to have a date by which you can release the game. It's going to be in there. And there's a chance that you're going to have difficulty hitting that date. And in all probability, you're going to have to work a lot harder, work overtime, work hours to actually hit that target. OK, so the fundamental problem or issue here is that games by themselves are quite unpredictable when it comes to timing. Now, especially if you're making something new, you're something making innovative, you're doing something that hasn't been done before, that's going to take a lot longer to figure out. The iterative process of making games is such that it is not predictable. If you've planned for a year, it might take a year and a half. Things usually take a lot longer to make in video games and the fundamental nature of game making is such that it's not very predictable. 
So let's make one thing very clear. I'm not saying that crunch is a good thing. And I'm not saying that crunch is something that you should accept. What I'm saying that if you want to work at a game studio, whether you want to work by yourself or work for somebody else, there will at some point definitely be delays. And that point you're going to have to crunch. Having said that, crunch should be a one off thing. It should be something that happens in exceptional circumstances. It's something that should not be possible to predict, right? If that happens once in a while, that's fine. However, if you're at a studio, if you're in a company where crunch is something that happens very, very regularly and you're expected to do it and everyone's expected to do it, well, then that could be a problem. It's possible that the, the company itself has a problem with crunch culture. And also remember that if you do crunch once in a while, you should be compensated for it. I know companies that offer overtime. I know companies that offer a compensatory days off for times when people have to work weekends. So at the very least, if you have to crunch once in a while, you should be compensated in one day or the other. If you find yourself working at a game studio, where crunch is a regular thing, uh, where it happens very often and for long periods of time, it means that they do have a crunch culture. And then it's up to you to take a call whether you want to continue there or not. Because remember that crunching for long periods of time is going to affect you. It's going to affect your sleep patterns, your health, it's going to affect your relationship, and it's going to be it's not going to be a good thing in your life. So you will have to take that call as to whether you want to move on to a company or a studio that has a better work culture. If you want to join a game studio, do not do it for how awesome their games are. It's possible that you play AAA games and you want to work for a AAA company. Remember, AAA companies, some of them are known to have the worst uh, crunch culture. Uh, so make sure that you do your research, find out about the studio that you're joining, talk to people who are there. And if the rumor, or if you find out that they have a crunch culture, that it's possible that that studio may not be the best one for you. You can even join a smaller studio, which has a much more balanced culture, um, which doesn't crunch. They may not make the kind of games that you like to play. So you may have to compromise with the kind of games you're making. It's possible, but you will definitely have uh, a much better work life balance. You'll be able to, you know, make games as well as, you know, spend time with your family, exercise, take holidays, etc. Overall, I think that it's going to be a much better decision for you, even though you're not going to work ideally on the games that you like. So ultimately, it is your decision and your choice to make sure you make an informed decision, right? Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any comments, do let me know right here and make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification button. I will see you around. Let's go.